Southeastern 14 is presented by Bet Online, which has been your tournament bracket headquarters all tournament season. A lot more in store for you in sports this year with Bet Online. MLB is here, NBA, NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your spring and summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that is B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. All right, now we're going to talk about Alabama football, Chase. And and Chase Robinson joins me. I'm Chris Lee, the the host here at Southeastern 14. Um, Been been a big offseason for the Crimson Tide. Uh, You you may have heard there was a coaching change. I thought that Alabama killed it with the hire of Kalen DeBoer. Nobody's going to be Nick Saban. He is probably the best coach in any sport of, of my lifetime, pro or college, I, I you, maybe you could say Bill Belichick. You could maybe name some names in the the competition, but it's a very short list. And I could argue he's the best coach in American sports in my lifetime. But I think they made a good hire in, in Kalen DeBoer. We're going to talk about three things that he needs to do to be successful at Alabama. And you and I had a little fun off air with this first one. Um, you said key number one is is keep expectations the same, and I said, are, are, are we sure about that? <laughs> yeah, because that, I mean, that's a trap that, that can eat you in a hurry in Tuscaloosa. Uh, it is, but uh, you know, I think that he has the chance to to keep this program rolling. I know there's a lot of people that are are doubting his uh, ability to to win championships at Alabama. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I think he will, and I think he certainly can. Well, am I saying he's going to win it all this year? No, I'm not saying that, but uh, I think he has a chance to be a really good coach and to take Alabama or to continue where they're going. So keeping expectations the same of, hey, we're, we're in it to win it. I mean, we're not, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's coaching them up that way. He's got a, a great uh, staff around him to help him do that. He's uh, recruiting well. So uh, keeping the expectations the same as far as what he expects from the guys. Uh, he's uh, kept a lot of the same programs that Nick Saban ran uh, within the team, the the fourth quarter program and some of those other uh, things. And he's pushing the guys similar to the way Nick Saban did. Now he's doing it his own way. You know, he, he's pumping out music at practice and having a good time, you know, and, and all that things that you may not have seen uh, Nick Saban do with his teams. But um, as long as Kalen DeBoer, you know, Alabama football, the folks uh, here in the state of Alabama uh, love their football and uh, there's going to be a lot of expectations on Kalen DeBoer. But if, if he can keep those expectations similar to what Nick Saban did, I, I think he can be successful at Alabama because he's going to he's going to push the program or continue the program rather in the right direction. Yeah, it's crazy, and I, I'm not saying he's a better coach than Nick Saban, but he's he's got a better winning percentage as a as a football head coach. Now, look, some he's of that winner. has come at, at at places like Southern Illinois. Um, excuse me, I, you know, he's been at Fresno State. He won some games there. He, he, some of these are NI, NAI, but still, winners win, and I, I think. <laughs> One way to find a winner is find a guy who's won in the past. He's certainly done that, and certainly they were so much fun to watch at Washington. Now, now what is a fair expectation? Because on one hand, you've got Alabama expectations. You've also got the the ground that has shifted. Uh, It it wasn't just this with the the four-team playoff, pencil in Alabama in in the playoffs like it would have been maybe 10 years ago under the same circumstances. Uh, w- w- what is fair to expect for Kayla DeBoer in Alabama? Yeah, I think they'll be a contender. Um, you know, the, the whole shape of college football is about to change this year as the playoff expands. Uh, and and so I, I, I think there's just question marks over everybody of, of who can make this 12-team playoff. I think Alabama's a playoff team this year. Uh, I think they'll make the 12-team playoff. Uh, again, there's folks out there who who don't think that I, I do. I think they'll be a playoff team. Uh, this year, as will several other SEC teams. Uh, but, you know, I, I think you start with, you know, this is the tough SEC schedule that he has in his first year in the conference as a head coach. First SEC game against George Bulldogs. Uh, that's tough. And so, um, you know, compete in these games. Uh, you know, 
this may not be an SEC championship team this year in Alabama. It could be, but it it, it could not be. And so, um, you know, I think if he just keeps these guys uh, with a perspective of, hey, we may not be an SEC champion, we may not win it all this year, but we're building towards that. And college football has always changed uh, completely. Uh, you and I know that. Everybody watching knows that. And and like you mentioned, it's not the same as it was ten years ago. And so there's everybody else around Alabama is much better. And so uh, it's not going to be the same as it was 10 years ago uh, because the teams are, are recruiting at a high level, just like Alabama's done. They're getting guys out of the port. They're, they're making their team like Alabama was uh, in their dominant days, you know, in, in from 20, 2009 to, you know, 2015 or so. And so, um, you know, I, I think, um, I think this is a playoff team. You know, I, I think, that's kind of what they're aiming towards right now is let's get in the playoffs and see what happens with it being a 12 team playoff. Now anything can happen. And yeah. uh, so I think that's going to be uh, kind of beneficial for Kalen DeBoer. Let's get there and let, then let's see what happens. All right. Y- your point number two, uh, make sure the defense complements the offense. Th- that's always tough to do. I think it's tougher to do than ever in this era of college football with tempo and, and all the things that go along with that was even tough for Nick Saban to do in his last year, uh, yeah. making changes to the offense and all those things. What does that look like this year for Kalen DeBoer? You know, I, I think the offense is pretty set for Alabama. Like, it's it's a good offense. Kalen DeBoer is an offensive mind. We saw what, he, what he's done, uh, you know, especially at Washington with the quarterback that he had and the numbers they put up. So I, I think the – uh, that we're going to see some fireworks with the Crimson Tide offense on the defense side of the ball. There's a lot to be replaced. There's some new guys. They're having to to mix things up a little bit. I love Kane Womack, the defensive coordinator uh, for Alabama. He's been the head coach at South Alabama. Uh, they were together at Indiana, DeBoer OC, uh, Womack DC, and and so he brought Kane up to Tuscaloosa from Mobile and has kind of turned the defense over to him. And I really like that hire because of the energy that he brings and his style of defense. But I think defense is going to be really important this year because of kind of the offenses that that are in the SEC, some of the quarterbacks that they're going to be facing. Um, you know, you you get – I think Alabama is one of those teams that you get into a, to a shootout. You know, the offense is going to do well, but – uh, I think Alabama needs to avoid being in a in an offensive shootout where there's just touchdowns yeah. all over the place. The defense needs to be able to make some stops uh, to help out this offense. Again, I like the way the offense is going, but the defense has, has got to play at a high level as well. And I think, again, he's brought in the staff to do that. He's getting the players to do that. It just uh, the, the defense has got to be able to complement the offense. If, if that happens, if that's the case, I think it's going to be a really good season for Alabama. All right, point number three, keep recruiting at a high level. Okay, on one hand, Alabama is the best program in the history of college football. Uh, You know, it's succeeded at a high level very recently. All the things that make Alabama football great um, are are, are still in place, other than than Nick Saban, but as we just mentioned, they, they made a pretty darn good hire to replace him. At the same time, it's not what it was 10 years ago. Uh, you have Georgia coming in with Kirby Smart, whereas Nick Saban, you could just pencil him in for the number one recruiting class probably, yeah. I don't know, four out of every five years. You, you got Georgia being the team that, that's kind of taking that spot. That's number one. Number two, NIL. Number three, adding Texas and Oklahoma to the league. It, it is, in a vacuum, not as easy as it is to do a few years ago. At the same time, it is Alabama. Alabama has always been able to recruit no matter who the coach so there's always going to be that. But what does recruiting at a high level in 2024 and going forward look like, Chase? You know, a lot of people said when Kalen DeBoer was hired at Alabama, one of the big concerns was, can he recruit the SEC footprint? Can he recruit Alabama? Can he recruit the Southeast? And I think it's obvious just in the however many months he's been the head coach, the, the several months now, that he can and he will and he's going to be a force in recruiting. Um I mean, you just think of him, him being able to um, – Ryan Williams, the day Nick Saban or the day after Nick Saban announced his retirement, Ryan Williams from Sarah Land High School uh, down in Mobile, a decommitted from Alabama. But after a couple of weeks, he recommitted to Alabama because of Kalen DeBoer. So I think that just shows you, and, and that's just one of, of several, uh, that he can recruit at a high level, especially uh, in the Southeast. He's got five or six from the state of Alabama. 
He's already making great uh, relationships and connections with high school coaches in Alabama, which is big. Alabama has great high school football, has some big-time um, schools and, and coaches. So he's already kind of developing relationships and 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 making connections with high school coaches, which is going to be key because there's been some coaches uh, who have not been able to do that or have just neglected to do that, and, uh, and, and it didn't work out well for him. So he started off, uh, especially in the state of Alabama, of – making relationships and recruiting it really hard. And I think that's going to really help him uh, in, in the long run as he recruits the SEC footprint um, to, to have those good relationships. So he has to keep that up and then uh, keep bringing in these five-star guys. He has got a great, uh, great product to sell in Alabama football. And uh, of course it, it depends a lot now on NIL and everything that, that goes along with that, but they're going to see a good product on the field under uh, Kalen DeBoer, I believe, uh, coming up this fall. So I think he's got a great product, uh, and and I think his pitch is, is, is good. And so I'm excited to see what he can do at recruiting, but he's got to continue to recruit the Southeast at a high level. And uh, here's what I find interesting, and admittedly this is taking a little bit of an optimistic point of view. You, you and I could could walk in as Alabama football coaches today and and go recruit the South with some degree of confidence just by having that A on our hat. Um, so th there's always that. Alabama's always kind of a brand that's going to supersede the coach. But here's what I find interesting. He comes from Washington, and you look at their roster from last year, it's got a heavy California presence. Obviously, that's a state that's full of talent at a time when, you know, you, you see in those Pac-12 kids, um, you know, there is no Pac-12. Now those teams are Big Ten. To, to me, if you're going to travel anyway, maybe it makes coming to Tuscaloosa a little bit easier. But I, I find it very interesting. He's recruiting at a place that everybody's been able to recruit because of the brand of Alabama football. And, oh, by the way, he's come out of a place where he recruited an area that, that I think he's going to have some connections. That I'm not going to say the California footprint wasn't open Alabama before because, of course, it was. But it's different because you've got a guy who's brought in a whole roster of players from that area, also in Texas and some places too, and been successful. I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see what the synthesis, synthesis of that does for Alabama recruiting. He's got great connections. There's no doubt about it uh, from where he's been and, and where he is now. So, I think those connections will will come in in uh, in in grain uh, will come in handy for him. So uh, again, if if he can recruit the West Coast, re recruit the Southeast, I mean, I, I think he's set. I mean, I think we're going to continue to see great classes in Alabama. There's no doubt about it. So I think just based off his connections and where he's been, he can be a really good recruiter and continue that there in Alabama. All right, uh, thank you for watching our video about three things. Kalen DeBoer must be must do to be successful at Alabama. He's Chase Robinson. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, presented by Bet Online.